Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, in the years Our Miss Brooks has been teaching English at Madison High School, her principal, Osgood Conklin, has made his own appraisal of her worth. Now, whenever a position of responsibility is open at Madison, Miss Brooks is the first name that pops into Mr. Conklin's mind. That's so he can pop it right out again. <laughs> Oddly enough, though, he did put me in charge of Madison's Christmas drive for secondhand clothing. I discussed my new duties with my landlady over breakfast last Friday. But, Connie, Christmas is only ten days off. Why did Mr. Conklin wait until now to start his clothing drive? I guess he couldn't make up his mind about one important item, Mrs. Davis. What's that? Whether he should organize the teachers to get clothes for the needy or organize the needy to get clothes for the teachers. <laughs> <coughs> but it is a good cause. What are you donating, Connie? I'm giving an old dress of mine, Mrs. Davis. But you're the head of the drive. Is one dress enough? I was going to give two, Mrs. Davis, but I remembered a Board of Education rule that says a teacher can't appear in public in a slip. <laughs> well, I'm going to help out, too, Connie. I've got my donation right on this chair. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mrs. Davis. I couldn't decide whether to give my old bathrobe or my old overcoat to the drive, but I finally made up my mind. Here you are, dear. Say, this bathrobe is in pretty good condition. That's the overcoat. <laughs> oh, well, I'd better get ready to leave. Walter Denton's picking me up soon. Well, uh, before you go, Connie, do you still plan on doing your Christmas shopping this afternoon? Oh, yes, indeed, Mrs. Davis. I've got the $25 I saved up this year right in this envelope. Good. I made out a little Christmas list of my own. I figured that with you being downtown anyway and me having so many things to do around the house, you wouldn't mind making a few simple purchases for me. Oh, I'll be glad to, Mrs. Davis. What do you want me to get? I've got the names and the presents all itemized, Connie, and here's $25 I've saved up. How many presents do you want me to get? Just for the immediate family. My sister Angela, my brother Victor, a couple of cousins. It only comes to 12 gifts altogether. <laughs> Are you sure you don't mind doing my shopping for me, Connie? Not at all, Mrs. Davis. I just have one problem. What's that? Who will I get to do mine? <laughs> It was very nice of you to secure these old clothes from your friends and neighbors, Walter. You must have put in quite a lot of effort into this drive. For sweet charity and you, I'd bust a gut. <laughs> Walter, please. The word is burst. <laughs> Sorry. But how do you like my contribution, Miss Brooks? It's lovely, Walter. Some old lady will be delighted with this lace shawl. That's my old sweatshirt. <laughs> I guess some moths took a taste of it. Some moths left a taste of it. <laughs> Thanks for the contribution. Well, that's not all I'm doing for your drive, Miss Brooks. Wait till you see the headline in the school paper today. The monitor? What does it say? It says, Miss Brooks needs clothes desperately. <laughs> well, does that sound urgent enough, Miss Brooks? Urgent? Sounds like I was caught backstage at a burlesque show. <laughs> I appreciate your interest in this drive, Walter, and if there's ever anything I can do to reciprocate... There he is, Miss Brooks. You see, I haven't bought Harriet Conklin her Christmas present yet, and I thought maybe you could make a suggestion. Well, what kind of a present do you have in mind? Well, I want something that appears luxurious without being excessively opulent. There's something steeped in gentility rather than touched by flamboyance. In a word, it should be a gift that conveys to its recipient... All the ardor and sincerity of its meticulous donor. <laughs> How much do you want to spend? A buck and a quarter. <laughs> Why don't you just send her your description of what the gift should be like? <laughs> no, I'll try and help you out, though, Walter. I'm doing my Christmas shopping this afternoon. Maybe I'll get an idea. Miss Brooks, did you say that you're going shopping today? 
I get the feeling that yes would be a fatal answer here. <laughs> but yes, Walter, I am. Well, what a fortunate coincidence. Now, what could be simpler than to leave the selection of Harriet's present up to you? But, Walter, I've got so many and You'll be things. passing the store counters anyway, Miss Brooks. And who has a finer taste than you have? Who has a better sense of values? An eye for beauty. Walter, you ought to know me well enough by now to realize that flattery will get you somewhere. <laughs> I knew you'd do it. Oh, I can't think of anyone I'd rather have select presents for Harriet and my mother. Well, I figured, wait a minute, who raised? Oh, it'll be a cinch, Miss Brooks. Well, my mother is very easily pleased. That's obvious. <laughs> After all, who knows women and their desires better than you do? And while you're there, you can get my father's present, too. Why, Walter, you're implying that I know men and their desires, too. <laughs> do you know men? Oh, Miss Brooks, when it comes to men, no one even comes near you. Don't rub it in. <laughs> here, here, Miss Brooks. Take this $5 bill and put it in your bag. All right, Walter. Oh, dear, I forgot my bag. I'll just put it in this envelope with the other money. I'm sure grateful for this favor, Miss Brooks. I know you wouldn't do this for just anybody. You're right, Walter. This year, I'm doing it for just everybody. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Boynton. What brings you to first-year English? Uh, Miss Brooks, I've got something for you. Well, it took you long enough to find it out. <laughs> <laughs> you mean those clothes? <laughs> yes, I, I brought some things in for the drive. Something of mine and a suit of Mr. Conklin's. He asked me to bring it in before your first class starts. Oh, we've got minutes yet, Mr. Boynton. Just put them down with the rest of the things. Okay. Okay. Say, that's quite a stack you've got there. I know, I've been dieting. <laughs> I was talking about the pile of clothes. I, I wish I could have given more to the Christmas drive than I did, Miss Brooks. I think you've made a splendid contribution, Mr. Boynton. You do? Some shivering derelict will be tickled with those tennis shorts. <laughs> those are slacks, Miss Brooks. It's just the way they're folded. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to have given a suit like this one Mr. Conklin donated. This still has plenty of wear in it. It does seem to be in pretty good shape. I'll say it does. Why, with a little fixing here and there, a few alterations, a good cleaning and pressing... Get that look out of your eye. He'd recognize it on you in a minute. <laughs> By the way, where's your jacket? Oh, this bundle was pretty heavy, so I left it in the lab. I can work better this way, if you'll forgive my shirt sleeves. Now, can I help you sort these clothes? Oh, no, thanks, Mr. Boynton. They'll do that at the mission. They're sending a truck for the stuff around lunchtime. At least I hope it gets here by then. I don't want to get tied up this afternoon. I have a lot of Christmas shopping to do. Oh, I see. Miss Brooks, could I ask you something? I do. I mean... <laughs> Why, of course, Mr. Boynton. You say you're going to do your Christmas shopping this afternoon? What in the world gave you that idea? You just said so. Me and my big mouth. Well, I am going to shop, Mr. Boynton, but oh, I don't... Oh, what a fortunate coincidence. I've got to clean up my lab today, and, well, if you're going to be downtown anyway, what would be simpler than to leave the selection of my parents' gifts to you? Mr. Boynton, I simply won't have time. Oh, but I'm Miss sorry. Brooks, you'll be passing the store counters anyway, and who has finer taste than you have? Who has a better sense of values or an eye for beauty? Oh, who indeed? I can't think of anyone who, who would know better what my parents and my Aunt Maddie and Uncle Fred would like. Aunt Maddie and Uncle Fred? They're Cousin Liza's parents. Oh, she's on the list, too, right after Mike and Danny, my twin nephews. <laughs> well, what about your Boy Scout troop? Don't you want me to get presents for them? Will you have time? <laughs> sure, I stay open late during the holidays. <laughs> Look, Mr. Boynton, I'll get as much of your shopping done as I possibly can. Oh, fine. Here's the list, Miss Brooks, and, and here's $20. Oh, I'll just slip it into this envelope with Mrs. Davis's and Walter's and my money. Walter and Mrs. Davis have money in there, too? Yes, they've also subscribed to the Brooks Shopping Service. <laughs> now, I've got to get over to the home economics room. The kids in there were supposed to collect some stuff for the drive, too. Well, I'll give you a hand, Miss Brooks. I'll take it. Oh. <laughs> First, I'd better put this envelope in my desk. Oh, dear, it's locked, and I've left the key at home in my bag. 
Would you mind putting the envelope in your trouser pocket, Mr. Boynton? Well, this, this is a trifle embarrassing, Miss Brooks, but I'm afraid I've got holes in all my pockets. I'm still a bachelor, you know. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's easily remedied, Mr. Boynton. Well, of course it is. While we're in the home economics room, you can sew up the pockets. <laughs> That's not what I had in mind, but it's a start. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll just put this envelope in the breast pocket of Mr. Conklin's suit on top of this pile. It'll be safe here for a few minutes. Well, it's safer than carrying it around, I guess. All set. Come on, Mr. Boynton, we're off to get domestic. <laughs> I hope they've got a nice batch of stuff in there. Mr. Conklin expects to surpass last year's drive. Well, here are the bundles, Harriet. Oh, but there's no sign of Miss Brooks. I guess the people from the mission got here sooner than she expected. I guess so. Now, oh, come on. Let's haul this stuff out to their truck. But, Walter, don't you think we should consult Miss Brooks before we take it? Why bother her about it? She knows where it's going. Besides, we're saving her the trouble of carrying this stuff out herself. Well, if you think so, Walter. Believe me, when Miss Brooks finds out what we've done for her, she'll thank us till she's blue in the, in the face. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate's Colgate Dental Cream It cleans your breath What a toothpaste What it cleans your teeth Colgate toothpaste Cleans your breath What a toothpaste What it cleans your teeth Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath While it cleans your teeth And the Colgate way Stops tooth decay best More than two years research Showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth Right after eating Helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the one and only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. <laughs> Well, when I got back to my room and discovered the absence of Mr. Conklin's suit containing $75 belonging to Walter, Mrs. Davis, Mr. Boynton, and me, I was fit, as the old expression goes, to be tied. The suit itself wasn't worth it ne anywhere near $75. In fact, no suit of Mr. Conklin's is worth that much money, even with him in it. <laughs> but my problem now was getting it back. And in my first free period, I headed for the biology lab to consult Mr. Boynton. Good morning, Miss Brooks. Oh! Oh, it's you, Mr. Conklin. You startled me. Really? But I addressed you in quite a well-modulated tone. I guess that's what startled me. <laughs> that is, I didn't see you sidle out of your office. I don't sidle, Miss Brooks. There's absolutely no necessity for me to pussyfoot through the halls of Madison. Oh, I know it's not a necessity, Mr. Conklin. It's sort of a luxury. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a little upset this morning, sir, about the clothing drive. But I understand you've done a splendid job. In fact, I stepped out here to congratulate you on vindicating my confidence in you. Well, that's very nice, Mr. Conklin, but it I really... It didn't take me long to select the right person to head the Christmas drive, Miss Brooks. The moment the idea of old clothes hit me, I thought of you. <laughs> I was a natural, all right. Of course, I gave other members of the faculty my careful consideration, too, but it wasn't long before I said to myself, Osgood, Miss Brooks is your man. Isn't it funny? That's how Mr. Boynton feels about me, too. <laughs> Look, Mr. Conklin, there's something I've got to do oh, when I... Of course, I... I wouldn't keep you from your work for the world, especially such charitable work, Miss Brooks. If more of us could realize what genuine satisfaction the spirit of giving evokes, the world would be a brighter place. Well, I'm brightening my little corner like mad. This is a great thing we're doing, Miss Brooks, giving to our fellow man. This is the true Christmas feeling. And we must all give, give, give until it hurts. It hurts, it hurts. <laughs> Please, Miss Conklin, if you excuse me, I've I got... I wouldn't to... think of detaining you another minute. Oh, before you go... 
How did you like my contribution to the drive? Wonderful, Mr. Conklin. It's a very nice suit. I'll say it was nice. And it still had several years' wear in it. I just bought it in 46. 1946? I mean, <laughs> you can tell it's quite new. Outside of a few battle scars, it hardly looks secondhand. Battle scars? Yes. Yes, like the time you spilled a bottle of ink on it. Not all of the ink could be removed. Oh, but that wasn't even noticeable, Mr. Conklin. No, no, it wasn't. After I had the suit dyed from brown to blue. <laughs> However, that suit always held something for me. It's loaded for me. <laughs> That's what I've got to find out about, Mr. Conklin. You see, I left something in the pocket, and, well, I've just got to get back that suit. But you can't do that, Miss Brooks. Once I've made a donation, I never take it back. How would it look to the folks at the mission? But there's no way for them to tell your suit from any of the others. Oh, but there is. My name is stenciled into the lining. Not that I wanted anyone to know I was giving, of course. You just didn't want anyone not to know. <laughs> oh, Daddy, there's a call for you in your office. Will you get it? I I'll call them back, Harriet. But it's Mother. She says it's urgent. With your mother, it's always urgent. Probably wants me to bring home a paper. You'd better talk to her, Mr. Conklin. I'm going in to see Mr. Boynton about our predicament. Very well, Miss Brooks. But remember, it is better to give than to receive. That may be, Mr. Conklin. But if I may show off my background in English literature, there's another famous parable which goes, as good as it is to give, it's better to get back that which ain't yours to give. <laughs> what a fuss to make over a few dollars. Some people are just mercenary, I guess. Hello. Yes, Martha, what is it? Have I had your necklace repaired yet? I don't remember your giving it to me. What? You put it in the pocket of my blue suit Wednesday night? Martha, was that my brown-dyed blue suit? <laughs> it was, but I donated that to the Christmas clothing drive today. And that necklace had a genuine opal in it. I've got to get it back. I've got... Hmm? I'm not excited. No, I... No. Now, don't give me that bull about charity. <laughs> I'll get that suit back if I have to rip the mission apart with my bare hands. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I caught you before you went to lunch, Mr. Boynton. I was just cleaning up the lab, Miss Brooks. What's the trouble? Mr. Conklin's suit has been picked up and delivered to the mission. Oh, that's nothing to get excited about. It's supposed to go there, isn't it? Yes, but the money is still in it. I don't know what to do. Well, now, now, take it easy, Miss Brooks. What money is still in it? The shopping money. Mine, Mrs. Davis's, Walter's, and yours. <laughs> I must have tripped over the stool. <laughs> what, what time are they going to distribute this clothing, Miss Brooks? This afternoon, Mr. Boynton. We've just got to get down to that mission and get the suit back. Well, are you sure you could identify Mr. Conklin's suit? With the things I've spilled on it, if I can't identify it, it'll identify me. <laughs> How are we going to go about getting it? Well, we'll simply park outside the mission and, and watch every person who leaves the premises. In that way, we're bound to see who walks out with Mr. Conklin's suit on. The rest is up to you. What do I do? Pick his pocket while he waits for a bus? <laughs> Please, Miss Brooks, we'll devise some sort of scheme on the way downtown. Now, now meanwhile, let's, let's be calm about it. It isn't the end of the world, even if we fail to recover the money. Heaven for Fend. <laughs> You've looked through this mission window for ten minutes now, Miss Brooks. Have you seen Mr. Conklin's suit yet? No, but I spotted the dress I donated, and I've been following its progress. What's happened to it? It's been rejected three times. <laughs> say, say, isn't that Mr. Conklin's suit heading for the door? Alone? Oh, you mean <laughs> on that little man? Yes, I think it is. You better get on the other side of the door. Oh, don't worry, Miss Brooks. I'll do my part to help get it back. Now, good luck. Oh, pardon me, my good man. Yes? May I speak with you for just a moment? Yes. It's about that suit you've got on. Are you quite satisfied with it? Yes. Yes? 
<laughs> yeah, but look at the way it fits. If I were you, I'd take it back at once. What do you want me to do, go around in my underwear? <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course. <laughs> Maybe you could get a better one. Now, there's no reason why you shouldn't do every bit as well as this man coming toward us now. I'm sure he got his suit in the mission. Pardon me, bud, but did you get that suit at the counter inside? Yeah. <laughs> it's contagious. You say that's a mission suit you've got on. Well, sure, I, I just got it. Boy, were you gypped. <laughs> Gypped? You mean to say you wouldn't like to look like he does? If I wanted to look like he does, I wouldn't have turned in the suit they're burning <laughs> Well, I didn't want to mention this, but I guess I'll have to Do you know who wore that suit before you, as recently as last Wednesday? Who? I don't want to come right out and say, but, well, the fellow had his hands crossed on his chest with a lily in them A stiff, huh? <laughs> Let's just say he wasn't very active now, now, don't you think you ought to trade that suit in for another one? After all, its last owner might not like the idea of your wearing it He, he might come back after it Baloney I don't believe in that kind of stuff uh, Miss Brooks, Mr. Boynton, I've got to talk to you at once Why, Mr. Conklin, what are you doing here? Uh, well, uh, I've had a change of heart about my donation I'd like to get it back Boy, what an Indian giver <laughs> I don't believe I know you, my good man. Ferguson's the name. Cosmo Ferguson. <laughs> How do you do? But, <laughs> Mr. Conklin, why do you want your suit back? Uh, because of something that my wife put into a... Into, uh, Ferguson, you're wearing my suit. What do you mean, your suit? I happen to have worn that garment as recently as last Wednesday. <laughs> Holy cow, it's a stiff <laughs> What's that? This lady said the suit was on a dead guy last Wednesday I must have caught you while you were dozing, Mr. Conklin <laughs> Look, look, I've just got to have that suit back It has a sentimental attraction for me Be a good fellow and return it Nothing doing I was handed this suit and told it was mine to keep Now I'm leaving Oh, wait, wait I'll get you another suit Please, Mr. Ferguson, uh, be reasonable no. Oh, come on, Cosmo. You don't want that old suit. Of course you don't. Give it here. Take your hands off of me, Pompous, or there'll be trouble. That's the idea. You and him fight. I'll hold your coat. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight. I'm just going. No, wait, wait, wait. I'll give you five dollars for that suit. I'm staying. I'll give you six dollars for it. Miss Brooks, why are you bidding for this suit? It's got a sentimental attraction for me, too. I've spilled more on that suit than any of your others. <laughs> I, I, I'll give you $10. 12. 18. 19. Gee, and I always thought they just sang songs at mission. <laughs> I'll bid $20. 25. 30. Mr. Conklin, did you bid $30 for this old suit? Yes, I guess I did. Uh, let's make that 27 22 17 11 <laughs> Wait a minute now I accept the lady's previous offer of 25 but, but how do you know she has the money to pay for it? Have you? I will have as soon as I get that coat uh, Just a minute, just a minute I'll give you $25 and the suit I've got on for that one It's a deal Let's go inside and change uh, uh, We can do that later Let's change coats immediately Okay yeah, then. You know I might parlay this mission business into a clothing factory <laughs> Hello, Miss Brooks Hi, everybody Walter Well, I'm all through helping out in the mission How'd you like the way I handle things? Oh, you were divine, Walter But I can't talk to you right now There's a matter of $75 I've got to recover Mr. Conklin, now that you've changed coats, would you mind looking through the pockets, please? Uh, that's, that's just what I am doing, Miss Brooks, and I'd better find... It. It's not here. But it was in the inside breast pocket, Mr. Conklin. No, no, it was not. It was in the side pocket. Oh, you're both wrong. Hmm? Harriet and I went through the pockets before we turned it into the mission people. We found Mrs. Conklin's necklace and all our shopping money, Miss Brooks. What? Uh, uh, Ferguson... Give me back that coat. Not Get a me. chance. I'm getting out of here. Uh, you people are all daft. But my twenty-five dollars. <laughs> and you two, Ferguson, wait, Cosmo, we'll make another deal. <laughs> now what's the matter with old Marblehead, uh, Mr. Conklin? Why is he running after that bum? 
You tell him, Miss Brooks. All I can say is it's definitely better to give than to get, especially where Cosmo's going to get it. <laughs> as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Cosmo didn't get very far because Mr. Conklin hit him with a flying tackle, recovered his coat and the money, and left. But Mr. Boynton and I felt so sorry for Cosmo that we chipped in and gave him two dollars. Gee, thanks, folks. Oh, you're very welcome, Cosmo. Merry Christmas. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get on with my Christmas shopping. (laughs) Oh, are you going to do your Christmas shopping now, Miss Brooks? Yes, I am. Well, if you're going to be in the stores anyway, would you take this two dollars and get something for me? Well, what do you want, Cosmo? A set of brass knuckles and Mr. Conklin's address. <laughs> Why, I'm surprised at you, Cosmo. Spending two dollars for brass knuckles. For 49 cents, you can get a hammer. Reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Parley Bayer. You want a beauty soap for a beauty bath. And your bath becomes a beauty bath when you change to proper cleansing with palm olive soap. For bathing with this beauty soap brings you the full beautifying effects of palm olive's mild and gentle lather, proved by doctors to bring most women lovelier complexions in just 14 days. Bath size palm olive is designed to give you everything you need for all over beauty care. Fragrance for daintiness, mildness for loveliness. Purity for gentleness, big bath size for thriftiness. So get big bath size palm olive, so mild, so pure, so right for all of you. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>